the metaverse, Web3, it's like a digital playground that we're all still trying to figure out. But here at CES 2023, this is the playground and I'm gonna have a whole lot of fun with it. What's up everybody? Welcome to the future of the metaverse. I'm here at B Haptics booth and you can see I'm rocking some real nice stuff. I have Jennifer here from B Haptics and Hi. Jennifer, can you tell everyone well, what are they looking at and what am I wearing right now? So you're looking at full body haptic solution for VR and AR. We are connecting digital world with your body. So you can feel like um, about 300 different haptics haptic patterns like uh, from raindrops to wow. explosions. This is a crazy experience though, like wearing this, I mean, this definitely brings so much more realism. Here we have haptic suit uh, called Tax Suit X40. Oh, dude. Oh, I feel it in my, I just got hit in the body. And we have haptic base plates attached to the headset. I can feel there's vibrations on my eyebrows when I'm touching. <laughs> oh. We have haptic gloves here with, um, called tech gloves. I can feel the sensation of everything I touch. There's a feedback and a response. Oh my gosh, I'm patting my back right now. This is, <laughs> I'm slow dancing with myself. Oh, you look so good. All right, Jennifer, yeah. I got I got to experience, that was amazing. I, I can honestly say I've never experienced anything like that, especially uh, slow dancing with myself. <laughs> That was new. Uh, but can you tell us, um, you know, all these things that I'm feeling and experiencing, uh, what is kind of some of the goals behind what B Haptics wants to bring to people? So we are basically connecting the digital world with human body. Um, we want to make sure that people are well connected in the digital world so that like it enhances your experience in um, VR, AR. So, you know, we can hear and look and watch with our visual and audio senses, but then this haptics is still missing in, in you know, digital world. So we want to make sure that that's not absent anymore. And then we want to connect like our us to the virtual world and metaverse in more natural ways. I was wearing the, the uh, goggles that had haptics in the face. I have them here on my hands and the chest, front and back, but there's other, you have other even like kind of uh, other pieces to almost yes. add to your body. So we have um, haptic arm sleeves and like um, feet sleeve, hand sleeve, so you can play and you can use that to um, feel the like any sensations on your feet. So as you kick a soccer ball or like do kaekondo, uh -huh. you can feel it all. We have arm sleeves. so. A lot of military training um, solution providers use this to um, train soldiers. It simulates the sensation of the recoil. Where are these available? Can people buy this now um, as you're showcasing it here at CES? So um, we have distributors all over the world. You can buy, uh, buy this from our official website. And this haptic suit is actually on Amazon for consumer use. We have uh, 200, over 200 uh, compa natively compatible titles on on Quest and um, Steam. Wow. So people can actually use this to enjoy the game. For non-integrated games, you can use the audio to haptic feature to convert the audio to haptic real time. We're still very early in this, yes, right? Yeah. So it's gonna get a lot more advanced over time. So they're bringing the physical world here at B Haptics to the metaverse and uh, I like it. Metaverse hand heart. <laughs> if you look around, there's a lot of action here at the Magic Leap booth, the first time we've seen them here at CES, so I'm here with the CMO, Daniel Diaz, and then also Alicia, who's gonna help us with the demo, but uh, Daniel, uh, welcome to CES. Thank you. As really, a booth, you know? Really excited to be here finally, officially, uh, and demonstrating the technology on the floor. It's been an incredible, incredible couple of days. How, how does it feel to, you know, for people that have been following tech, Magic Leap was this company, you know, everyone was teased by this kind of Star Wars tabletop demo years ago, right? right? right. And then, we really didn't, not many people got to know what was happening. So now you guys are back here. This is really a first public showing and a lot of people in the tech world are excited to see what Magic Leap is bringing here. Yeah, I think this next era of Magic Leap is all about transparency. We've really been very, very open about the tech, about the optical stack, how we do what we do, and really wanted to get the headset on as many people as possible so they can see what augmented reality is really capable of today. And with just kind of the momentum of people trying to figure out, you know, what is the metaverse? Everyone is kind of moving. There's many different pieces to this puzzle. 
Russell. Sure. Um, wh what are you hoping to kind of bring experience-wise to the table? When it comes to the metaverse? Yeah, yeah being I mean, a part of it. For us, the metaverse is really about the, the merging of the physical and digital world. It's not about a virtual world that you escape to. It's about really integrating incredibly valuable digital content when and where you need it in the physical world. That will be the ultimate payoff for the metaverse and I think Magic Leap will be one of the most immersive and interactive windows into that metaverse. Yeah and Magic Leap I mean I don't know if you guys have a your own kind of term but right your your glasses and setup is made to be the mix of physical and and, and, and that's dip, right. You know, right so you put Magic Leap on and you can see your entire physical world around you I can see you but then we're able to integrate digital content into that physical world. And so it really, really meant to amplify your abilities and help you do jobs better, really complicated jobs. So whether it's helping a surgeon go through surgery or a factory worker build a car or helping to train first responders, we can do that with this mix of digital and physical content. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'll try and experience some of this mix of go physical and digital. Um, okay, so I'm gonna tell you right, right now instantly, notice I didn't even have to do much sizing changes. Uh, that I pop it on, yeah, this flexed out a little bit. Um, even the way it, it kind of wraps around my head, it was one and done. So someone who has been using a lot of different headsets, that's already a, a key, just getting it on right away. And you can't see it right now, but I can actually see a skeletal framework of my fingers and hands um, as I'm holding them right here. And then when we look over here in this space, it's all these figures that you see here, These the different height of the architecture and these cubes, they have wireframes or showing that these glasses can physically see every surface and the depth. So the only thing you need to do with your hand, which is being tracked, you need to push that button. And you can push it in this way or you can push it like full power. Okay. So Just, you need to go, you need to push it like a physical button. Okay, and I heard the audio click. Nice. And now I'm seeing a, a build, two buildings and a street and some cars here laid out. With this technology that Magic Leap came up to, we are able to see things very well in every kind of light environment. And we can just give, give like more contrast and like purity to colors. They're showing two buildings stacked. You can actually see a building and a building behind it, but they're not see-through. It, it, the way that it's graphically being represented, it's, it's as if I'm looking at like a, a physical city. We've got the spatial audio. We have eye tracking. The field of view here in action, 44.6 by 53.6 by 70 degrees wide. We got a 1440 by 1760 pixel resolution. And then important to me, 120 hertz refresh rate uh, with the visuals that we're using. So, I mean, just even the fidelity of what we're looking at is really is really clean. So I wanted to take a moment and um, Daniel, can, can you actually talk about some of the other specs that these this model, what, what version of this Magic Leap model is now? So this is Magic Leap 2. Okay. So this is about 50% reduction in, in weight and volume. Um, the field of view is expanded to 70%. We we did a vertical field of view so we can really get, you know, when you think about industrial use cases, you want that large field of view to be able to see large distances, factories, warehouses, that sort of thing. Also, when you have a vertical uh, oriented field of view, you think about a surgeon on a table it's so much easier to actually just look up and down and not move your body. So you can keep your body still. If you oriented it horizontally and you wanted to look at content, you're actually moving your body. So all those things, that's all that really feedback that's subtle, but really came important. back from Magic Leap 1 when people were using that in enterprise use cases and we incorporated all of that into this device. What did they want? They wanted a lighter device that was easier to wear, more comfortable, better image quality, text legibility, color fidelity, and then the dimming piece. Like, how do I use this in brightly lit environments like an operating room or outdoor adjacent spaces or brightly lit factory floors? They needed that dimming in order for that content to be really as solid as possible and clear as possible. So we packed all of that into this, this new device that has been purpose-built for enterprise use cases. So just got experienced Magic Leap 2 for the very first time. Um, just incredible technology here and just can't wait to see how it evolves. Uh, Daniel, quick thing. When will this actually be potentially available? It is available it's right available now. Right it's now. been on sale since uh, the end of September last oh, year. Oh, okay. So uh, we are selling through resellers. So much the way any enterprise would buy a laptop or any piece of equipment, that's how that's how you buy Magic Leap. All right. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you. Good Magic you. Leap too. Nice to meet you too, man. All right, you see the steering wheel here, and look, there's a lot of great demos and fun demos here at CS. I'm here in May's booth. Uh, they're based out of South Korea, and so they have a liquid crystal on silicon chip that allows imagery such as used in headsets for VR, AR, or even heads-up displays where you could see it on your windshield. So they wanted to showcase their product via glasses and an experience that uh, I'm going to try for the first time. We have fans. We have uh, a moving car. I, 
I hope I can get out of this okay. Let's just see what happens. I'm going in. Oh, this is clean looking. So this is gonna be a 4K image delivered through these glasses. Um, they're the only company in the world that's making this chip with liquid crystal directly on the silicon. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna hold on to my butt. Just hold on. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Yo, the way. <laughs> okay, okay. This feels amazing. I'm making the turn. We're getting ready. <laughs> Yo. Yo, it's, it's getting bumpy. Uh, for me, this is the most immersive experience at the show so far. We're getting ready to go. <laughs> Oh my God. This is stuff you gotta try at CES. This is what we're here for, baby. Sh should, I, should I put my arms up? We'll see. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. <laughs> Woo. I'm just gonna. All right, all right. Here we coming down, here we coming down. Oh yeah! Oh, 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 it's Rocky. It's Rocky. Oh. I'm not even serious. Mommy! Mommy! Yo. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> oh. All right, <laughs> this is so good. Oh, give me that bump in the Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought those guys were faking it. This is legit. Oh, oh. what are they doing to me? Oh, oh, oh. oh That's what CS is all about. Everyone here, line up for this thing, okay? All right. That was great. That was great. Woo thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you very much, Eunice. Appreciate it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know, we keep on hunting for great stuff here. And let me tell you here, behind me, Hypervision, it's got one of the largest crowds around the booth. But this is what's amazing about CS. Years ago, I saw Hypervision and they were showcasing signs with their, I guess, rotating LEDs. And Ala here is one of the co-founders and the CEO of the company. And this is a completely different thing of how you guys have evolved uh, from those years, which is really, to me, what CS is all about, innovating and changing the trajectory of your company. So um, tell me, what are we looking at here with Hypervision? So today we're presenting the Hypervision Smart V platform. We're bringing customer experience to an absolutely new level. What we've evolved today is interactive holographic solutions. Today we're presenting the first giant holographic human. <laughs> One of the live stream solutions that allowed to live stream people from any part of the world. Let's say we are in Los Angeles, but we want to appear in a holographic way in New York. We made it absolutely possible. And actually bringing interactivity to the retail and any type of industry over there. So for people that aren't familiar with what they're seeing here, what is that? What is actually the technology? These are rotating, spinning like LED blades? Absolutely. So those are four blades, as we call it. Uh, that are equipped with LEDs that are rotating very quickly. There is no technical limit in terms of the size of the hologram itself. It basically can be for outdoor, indoor, absolutely bright enough to be in the window display, for example, or for an outdoor performance. And then again, we have like an example over here in the booth of an, like an AI that would be represented by an avatar. Uh, signage, uh, interactive car experience where you were talking about what, designing a car? Yeah, absolutely. So basically that interactivity, the Smart V platform opened up interactive solutions. Like for example, you can have a customer in a car dealership wanting to change the color, turn around the car, play around with the trim. That is possible in a holographic way. Or a digital avatar, a completely artificial intelligence AI driven human being that can interact with the customers, be it a personal assistant or a clerk in a bank 
bank telling you about the products and the solutions. I think what's fascinating to me when I see this is, right, we're used to seeing, yeah, you could do things on a large TV screen, but there's something visceral about the fact that it looks like the image is floating at you, it's in front of you, and it's not behind a screen. And I, I think that's like a lot of the magic when I just see this. So you said it was like interactive, um, that you could live stream. I see there's like a green screen, so, is that something that I could try and interact with? Absolutely, go for it. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Uh, hey, that's it here for the metaverse. I'm not going anywhere. Well, let's just go. Ooh, 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 ooh.